Good morning guys. Today our session is about a boiler water treatment. As we all know boiler is used in industries to generate a steam which will be used for the industrial processes by heating up the water. So here it is very important that the feed water which is has to be sent to the boiler must be devoid of certain substances which potentially damages to the boiler. So there are some common problems like scaling, corrosion and foaming will occur if the substances are not properly treated. So normally this boiler water is used to control the alkalinity, prevent scaling, correct pH and to control the conductivity. This is a main goal for your boiler water treatment. Remember that the boiler water must be in alkaline nature and it should not be in acidic nature because this acidic water will ruin the tubes but however the too much of alkaline will also damage the boilers hence the alkalinity of the water should also be maintained under proper control. And remember that if there are too many dissolved solids that will also affect the conductivity of the feed waters. Normally the pressure in the boilers is maintained um, and it is given in the terms of the unit uh, pounds per, per square inch that is PSI. In certain cases it is given as PSI G and in uh, certain other cases it is PSI A. What is this PSI G is pounds per square inch gauge whereas the PSIA is pounds per square inch absolute. This picture clearly depicts you what is the difference between this PSIG, PSIA and PSIB where this PSIB is your vacuum pressure and the range of this uh, vacuum pressure as well as gauge pressure and the absolute pressure is clearly shown here. Normally we classify the uh, boilers based upon its um, the mode of generating the heat and, uh, as well as based upon the pressures. So here we uh, have given you the two classifications. So first one is um, uh, general types of boilers based upon the method of steam generation as a fire tube boiler and water tube boiler. And second one is this boilers are classified based upon the pressure that is developed in the boilers as high pressure boilers and low pressure boilers. Um, other than that we have steam boilers as well as the hot water boilers. We will discuss this in deep. So first let's go to the fire tube boilers. Remember in fire tube boilers the combustion gases will be passed through the inside of the tubes while the water will be surrounding the outside of the tubes. This is very simple in construction and it is requires less rigid water treatment requirements. And, but what is the disadvantage of this is uh, here the excessive weight of steam has to be generated and excessive time is required to raise the steam pressure because of the relatively large volume of water that is surrounding these tubes and the inability to respond to the quick low change in the load again because of this large water volume is also a very important drawback in this fire tube boilers. Uh, therefore this fire tube boilers is normally called as a scotch marine boilers because they will be used to mostly in marine service because of its compact size. So from the name itself we could say that the fire or gases from the burner is channeled through this tubes so while the tubes will be surrounded by the fluid that to be get heated. So this is a picture that depicts you your um, fire tube boilers. See here that uh, tubes they carries the gases while the rest of the areas around the tubes has been collected uh, is been uh, done with the uh, water. So that is that water is uh, get heated up and uh, it is get burned up and that uh, it is helped to heat out the gases. Um, so this is just the reverse of the fire water tube boilers. Um, so we, we, when we go for the water tube boilers you will be able to know what is the difference between this fire tube and water tube boilers. Um, so but uh, we have certain advantages of this fire tube boilers also because they are relatively inexpensive and it is easy to clean. Uh, and it has compact in size and it has available it is available in various sizes and it is very easy to replace the tubes one if it is uh, once if it is get one out um, and it is well suited for space heating and industrial process applications um, but we, when we go for the disadvantages we already we have seen some few of the disadvantages apart from that um, this uh, fire tube boilers it's not suitable for high pressure applications of 250 psi and above and there is a limitation of high capacity steam generation because of this reasons only we are going to the water tube boilers. Uh, just we will recall in fire tube boilers the tubes will carry the gases while the, around the tubes we will be having the water. So this is the uh, ulta in this case of water tube boilers where the water will be inside the tubes and gas will be passed around the outside of the tubes. 
So this takes advantages uh, over this fire tube boilers and we will be having a lower unit weight uh, per pound of steam generated as well as less time that is required to raise the steam pressure and a greater flexibility for responding to load changes and a greater ability to operate at high rates of steam generation which are all the advantages compared to that of your fire tube boilers and this picture clearly depicts you how this arrangement is made um, just we can recall in this water tube boilers the water is being taken inside this um, tubes while the surrounding area is filled up with the gases so as to heat this water um, so this is just the uh, opposite of that of your fire tube boiler sum. So because of this uh, we have um, uh, many disadvantages in the water tube boilers because they are also available in sizes for greater than that of the fire tube boilers um, and they are able to handle high pressures up to 5000 psi which, is, which could not be done in your fire tube boilers um, and it can recover faster than their fire tube uh, boilers and it has the ability to reach very high temperatures as well as very high pressures. So when we come to the disadvantages, it's a capital cost is very high and cleaning is also more difficult due to the design and no commonality between the tubes that is one of the drawback here and physical size may be issue because we'll have a large number of tubes to carry out the water. So earlier cases in boilers what they do is uh, to make this feed water treatment just they apply the chemicals like soda, ash, starch, tannin etc inside the boiler and uh, so that it will be used as a direct softener. Um, so that also reduced uh, scale formation to certain degrees um, and it also makes a trouble free operation. Uh, but in modern boilers where we have an, uh, uh, with we, we have water walls and smaller diameter tubes as well as with uh, high temperature and high pressure and high suspended solids content um, this cannot be done um, so in this case we have to make high quality makeup water uh, which has minimum hardness and minimum suspended matter and dissolved uh, mineral content uh, so as to make the efficient operation and minimum maintenance uh. So let's be uh, discuss what is this uh, makeup water. Actually, the water what is sent to the boiler uh, for uh, making the steam. That water is uh, to be a uh, feed water, which will be consisting of uh, both the recovered condensed water, that is your return water. We can say that the recycled water from the condensate, um, uh, as well as the fresh water. This fresh water, if it is of uh, directly without any impurities, it can be taken as such. Otherwise, it has to be get purified in varying degrees um, and this fresh water is called as makeup water after its uh, treatment. Um, so the makeup water is na naturally it's a natural water either it may be in raw state if it is highly purified or if it does not contain any harmful substances that affect the boiler performance and uh, if it is not it should be treated by some other process before it is used. So we will just recall this. And the feed water is a combination of your written water as well as the makeup water. While the makeup water is a natural water which can be either in the raw state or it can be treated by some process before it is used. So on this feed water composition is very important because um, this feed water composition once again depends upon the quality of the makeup water and that of the amount of condensate. Um, okay, if it is not been properly maintained then there will be the foreign matters which will be affecting the uh, performance of this boilers. Um, and one more important term that we have to see in terms of boilers is your blowdown. Um, what, what do you mean by blowdown? Suppose uh, if this impurities are there in the um, boilers uh, during its uh, steam generation this impurities must be removed uh, by just discharging some uh, portion of the water from the boiler to that of the drains uh, and that is said to be a blowdown um. So what we do is, uh, how, we do, uh, how we do in case of seeding, we will discharge a portion of the seed water. Uh, similarly, uh, we will take a portion of a seed water and we will use it for the forecoming uh, activity sledge process or whatever may be the biological treatment process to enhance the process. Uh, similarly, here what we are doing is, we are discharging a portion of the water from the boiler which is having the impurities uh, to directly to the drains. Um, so such cases is called to be a blowdown in the uh, boilers. Um, so the permissible percentage of the blowdown that is depends upon the running cost and initial outlay but however uh, it is our tendency to reduce this percentage to a very small figure so that uh, it will not affect the efficiency of the boiler as well as the uh, cost of the boiler um, maintenance. 
So when we go for blowdown, there are two different types of blowdown. One is uh, continuous blowdown and other one is intermittent blowdown. From the name itself, we could say that uh, if this concentrated water is continuously removed from the boilers, then it is said to be a continuous uh, boiler blowdown. So where here, this is located in the area of highest boiler water concentration. Um, so it is a preferred way of blowdown as minimal loss of water and heat or recovery of heat content by use of blowdown wash, flash tank. Um, and we have intermittent blowdown also. Here the uh, wastewater or the sludge is removed intermittently from the boiler. Um, preferably it is located in the bottom part of the lowest boiler drum. So this picture shows you what is the difference here. I remember that the return water from the condensate along with it of the makeup water that is the feed water and uh, what happens here the blow down a portion of the wastewater is get discharged directly to the drains or it is discharged to the it gets recycled. So the stream from this it's once again it has been get condensed and is to be made as condensed water where we will be having in the process of making this condensate it has some losses in the stream also. And remember this water for boilers, it has both suspended solids and dissolved solids as well as dissolved gases which is will affect the uh, performance of the boilers. Um, so the dissolved gases here normally which affects are oxygen and carbon dioxide. Um, and the type and the amount of impurities in fresh water, it will vary with the source that like a lake, river or well so that the quality of the makeup water will also vary. So it is important to find out these characteristics and give proper treatment. And impurities in water are of importance because this water is used for stream generation and very specifically for high pressure boilers, the feed water must be pre-treated to remove these impurities. Normally, as I already said, we have to maintain alkaline nature of the uh, water feed water. Uh, so, this uh, natural water usually will be having the pH of 6.5 to 7.5 H, um, uh, 7.5 pH. So, what is the recommended uh, boiler water pH is uh, from 8.5 to 9.5 pH, that is your alkaline range. Um, if we have acidic water, then it will lead to corrosion of this boiler. Um. So why we have to do this boiler water treatment is um, to control the salinity, hardness, oxygen content, conductivity, acidity and basicity so, uh, basicity, so that the boiler water is to be free of all the um, harmful substances and it, therefore it will improve the performance as well as the efficiency of the boilers. Um. Normally we use the distilled water as boiler feed water but it is not possible always uh, since we get draw the uh, water from the natural sources. Um, so there will be a um, possibility of scale formation and corrosion uh, and this will also affect the uh, boiler performance. Uh, say for example if the scale is formed it leads to the improper heat transfer and which also leads to the degradation in efficiency of the boilers. Um, if the corrosion happens it decremates decrease the strength of the tubes as well as it will also finally lead to the leakage. See this uh, picture clearly shows you what are the impurities and what is the problem that is caused on the boilers. Um, say dissolved oxygen and carbon dioxide is a gaseous uh, substance that is present in the water which causes the uh, various problems. For example dissolved oxygen leads to pitting corrosion and carbon dioxide leads to condensate corrosion. Um, anyway we will see this corrosion uh, in detail in later slides. Um, so and similarly when we get the insoluble or non-ionic substances like suspended solids or silt um, the problem caused is falling. Falling is a bad smell that has been caused on the boilers. Um, and if it is like organics or oil that will cause foaming or carry over as we have already known what is foaming. It is just like um, uh, how the soap uh, forms lather when we wash with the cloths that uh, lather similarly here also because of the oil and organics. Uh, will have like a lather like appearance on the top of this water some okay so that is called as uh, foaming um, so this are the other impurities in water which affects the boiler already we have seen the dissolved gases it also makes corrosion some um, and here we can have calcium salts and magnesium salts not only in boiler for any area like where it is going to be where the water is transported this will be causing the scaling um, and uh, see in certain other cases uh, various other salts also causes corrosion um, and here silica it forms a very hot scale while the suspended solids and dissolved solids it results in carryover. So this is a 
show this chart shows you what are the various impurities that is present in the water uh, that is in your feed water and what are the problems that causes and how it can get rid by see for example here the impurity that present in the feed water is soluble gases which may be in for terms of oxygen or carbon dioxide or monoxide carbon dioxide or h2s which will be normally causing the corrosion of boiler tubes and it also leads to the aeration deaeration and it can be get removed uh, by using aeration or deaeration and chemical treatment methods um, similarly if the suspended solids are present in terms of sediment or uh, in terms of organic matter it results in sludge and uh, scale uh, carry over uh, as well as foaming so which can be removed by clarification filtration and by chemical treatment process um. If they dissolve colloidal solids, um, we have a different uh, the kind of categories under this. So where we can have oil and grease, hardness like calcium and magnesium, sodium, um, and alkalinity, sodium carbonate, sulfates, chlorides, iron, manganese, and silica. So each one has a different uh, yeah, effect on this boiler. Say oil and grease causes it forms and deposits, which can be removed by using this coagulation and filtration techniques. Um, and if it is hardness, it causes scale. and it uh, it makes a uh, boiler tube uh, burn through and it also inhibits the high temperature so that uh, it can be removed by softening and internal treatment uh, similarly we can go for the other things so normally this when we come for the other categories um, we could see this this uh, parameters or this dissolved solids can be removed by using ion exchange or deionization process um, that is normally used So these are the other soluble or ionic impurities that is present, and these are the problems that is caused. So already we have discussed about calcium and magnesium, which results in scale. And apart from that, we have sodium and potassium also that causes corrosion. Chloride and sulfate, which leads to corrosion. While carbonates, bicarbonates, and hydroxides leads to the scaling or foaming, and silica leads to the scaling or deposition. Apart from this, uh, the boiler water also contains the substances some um, which will potentially damage the boiler performance. Some, um, say for example, if I if there is iron is present, whether it may be in either soluble form or insoluble form, it will deposit on the boiler pots um, uh, as well as on tubes, and it will damage the downstream equipment, and it will also affect the quality of the certain manufacturing processes also. Similarly, if we have copper in the feed water, it will deposits and it will settle in the high pressure turbines. That for therefore it decreases the efficiency, and it requires a costly treatment for cleaning or changing out the equipment. And similarly, if silica if it is not removed at the low levels, then especially in high pressure boilers, the silica can cause extremely hot scaling. Um, when we come for the calcium. Um, Uh, that calcium causes scaling in several forms depending upon the chemistry of the boiler feed water. Like uh, because of that, it can be formed as calcium silicate and calcium uh, phosphate. Um, and similarly, magnesium. Magnesium, if combined with phosphate, magnesium can stick to the uh, interior of the boiler and coat tubes, and it attracts more solids and contribute to the scale. Um, similarly, if aluminium is present, it will also makes a scaling on the boiler interior, and it will react with the silica to increase the uh, uh, likelihood of scaling and hardness as we all know deposit it will always deposits and uh, forms a scale on boiler pots as well as on pipes um, and when we go for the dissolved gases like oxygen and carbon dioxide it can cause severe corrosion on both boiler pipes and pots um. So, how to have a efficient and well designed boiler water treatment? So, um, we should treat the feed water so that uh, that the feed water, as I already said, it is a combination of your condensed water or written water as well as the makeup water. So, this treat uh, this water should be properly treated and it should be removed uh, from the harmful impurities prior to it entering into that of the boiler. Um, and we should also promote internal boiler chemistry control and we should uh, see the maximum use of uh, steam condensate. Uh, and uh, we should have uh, controlled return line corrosion um, controlled return line so as to avoid this corrosion and we should avoid a uh, planned downtime and uh, therefore and the boiler failure if the planned downtime is there um, uh, then definitely it uh, decreases the um, operation uh, schedule as well as operation efficiency and we should uh, make as far as possible prolonging the equipment service life So in the next section, let's we discuss about the problems that is caused by the impurities in the feed waters in detail, and about the other um, waste treatment. Uh, I mean water treatment. What we are going to do for the what are the methods we are going to treat this water before it is subjected to that of the um, uh, boiler treatment process. Thank you.